they see. That's kind of the heart of what we want to talk about today. In September of 3 BC, this is when we're theorizing that they see something in the sky and they start booking it. And it's this. Two stars in the sky are overjoined to where they're conjoined. It's also very significant. You have the planet Jupiter, which they called a wandering star, because it wasn't fixed like all the other stars. It's on an orbit. But Jupiter, who is Jupiter in, in the Roman world? It is the king of the gods. It's the highest god of the Roman pantheon. And so here you have the king wandering star and a star called Regulus, which you can hear the, the word Regal. In other cultures, it's always associated with king. It's called Sharu, which means king in another language. It's, it's the king wandering star and the king fixed star. And together, these two massive bright stars create the brightest star that anybody alive at that time had ever seen. Christians just ignore perfect information in order to facilitate their story. And I'm going to explain to you in a minute how he's ignoring something that is so vital in understanding what he's talking about. Now, the first mistake that he's making is that he's calling Jupiter a star. During the Roman times in 3 BCE, everybody, every civilization pretty much knew Jupiter was a planet. No one thought Jupiter was a star at this time. The Babylonians, the Greeks, the Egyptians, the Romans, they all knew that this was a planet, not a star. This is why they called it Jupiter. This is why they named it after their king god. This is why the Babylonians called it Shuru as being the king. They understood that it was a planet, not a star. And when Jupiter does come in alignment with Rigelus, which Rigelus is in the Leo constellation and is more centered in the atmosphere, in, in the sky, it was looked upon, called the little king by some civilizations, it was looked upon as something meaningful, which is interesting because your Bible says that astrologers are to be put to death. Yet these Persian priests, these Persian magi were not put to death. They were accepting of their astrology. Herod was accepting of their astrology. The Bible, Jesus, the story of Jesus is accepting of their astrology, which is supposed to be outlawed by your God, according to your Bible. But I guess since it's for your God, it's okay. Now, big misconception. Big thought that I don't understand how any Christians can rationalize this. These three magi, or four, five, six, seven, eight magi, we don't know the actual number, follow this star in the east going, and they went west. Then when they left Jerusalem, they followed this star in the east and they went south. Jerusalem is about five minutes south. I mean, Bethlehem is about five minutes south of Jerusalem. But here's the kicker. How can a star settle over a house and be so distinctively settling over that house that it was just over the house. In today's world, in order for that to happen, it has to be at the elevation of a helicopter. A helicopter. Because that is only, that's the only way, as Ice Cube called it, the ghetto bird can hover over a house as a bright shining light. Even in the flat earth model, it is an impossibility for a star to hover over a house. And to make matters worse, the timeline is so jacked up. As I've said in many times, before, many videos before, Herod died either in 4 BCE or 1 BCE. So because we don't know, and he's, a, he's a saying this happened in 3 BCE, it's a plausibility. But Jesus, according to Luke, was born at the time of the census done by Augustus were commanded by Augustus and done by Quirinius, which happened in 6 CE. Your timelines don't math. And if the math ain't mathing, and if the physics don't physics, your story is an impossibility. You're smashing things together. But I'm really curious, how can you know these things for a fact? 
that stars do not hover over houses, but yet you still believe in this story. Make it make sense, because the physics ain't physic, physicking, and the math show hell ain't mathing. So y'all have a great day, and remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself, because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.